So sit back and relax for this one here. You can close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. We can feel that there is a potential within us. We can also feel that this potential wants to be expressed. We can see that everyone is hurting in some way, even ourselves, and that pain is making us all do crazy things, and that pain arises because of causes and conditions, and those causes and conditions can be changed. New thoughts, words, and actions can be initiated or taken up that are wise, skillful, and nobly worthy of an awakened being. This will then lead to a life of freedom and true authentic happiness, an awakened life, a life that expresses that potential that we can feel within us. I want you to imagine. Imagine that world of potential. Imagine a life of freedom. Imagine a world where everyone is free and truly happy. What does that world look like? What does that world feel like? And how would you think, speak, and act in that world? To help us actualize that potential, we call out now to the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Masters, and Teachers of the Dharma of the three times in the ten directions. Please consider us with kindness and understanding and grant us your blessings that these aspirations may be accomplished quickly. May it be that we all swiftly achieve enlightenment for the sake of all beings. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. Open your eyes. Better for being broken. So Kintsukuri, the poet, teacher, and lawyer, John Sean Doyle, had this to say about Kintsukuri. In Japan, there, in a, there is an art form called Kintsukurai, which means to repair with gold. When a ceramic pot or bowl would break, the artisan would put pe the pieces together again using gold or silver lacquer to create something stronger more beautiful than it was before. The breaking isn't something to hide. It doesn't mean that the ceramic bowl is ruined or without value because it's different than what was planned. Kintsukuri is a way of living that embraces every flaw and per imperfection. Every crack is part of the history of the object and it becomes more beautiful precisely because it had been broken. And people are the same way. This is a poem about Kintsukura. I'm like one of those Japanese bowls that were made long ago. I have some cracks in me, and they have been filled with gold. That's what they used way back then, when they had a bowl to mend. It did not hide the cracks. It made them shine instead. So now every old scar shows from every time I broke and anyone's eyes can see I'm not what I used to be. But in a collector's mind, all of these jagged lines make me more beautiful and worth a much higher price. I'm like one of those Japanese bowls. I was made long ago. I have some cracks you can see. See how they shine of gold? A lot of times in our world, in our lives, we don't believe that we're better for being broken. We believe that we are flawed beyond repair. We believe that if people would see the truth of who we are, that they wouldn't love us, talk to us, connect with us, care with us. That the story of who we are, we need to filter 
and post only the best parts. Show the world only the most beautiful moments. Uh, and those other parts that aren't so beautiful, we push down deep. We hide away and we repress. And we think that they're gone, <laughs> but they're not. They are not. They are stuck deep within you, deep within you. I, two weeks ago, I had a, a person and I knew I just, they had posted something that just seemed innocent, but I knew something was wrong in their lives. And I was like, oh, I need to call, I need to call. Because everybody else might think everything's okay, but I know oh, this is a cry for help. And they ended up calling me, which was a big thing. Because a lot of times, if you're calling me, you've hit the bottom. And you need somebody that can see you and hold you and be close. Right? And they... They knew something wasn't right. There was something, right? And they felt off. And every so often, when no one was looking, the pain would seep through, right? And, uh, you know, but I'm, but I'm fine, Ian. I'm fine. And I was like, oh dear. No, you're not. Like, you're not fine. <laughs> you're hurting. You're in pain. That pain that you haven't dealt with for 10 years, that you've pushed away because you've been too busy, and it wasn't the right time or the right moment or the right situation to, to sit with it. You've pushed it away because the world tells us that uh, we need to be positive and keep a stiff upper lip and hold our heads high and. And that, it, that had helped her, got her to a certain point. She was able to get stuff done, right? But uh, there was a whole aspect that she had locked away, suppressed, pushed down deep, pushed down deep, because it wasn't beautiful, right? It wasn't. It was an ugly truth. Pain, right? Yeah. To live in this world means many things, and one of those things is that we shall be wounded, and we shall wound. We will be hurt by others, and we will hurt others. You will not get through this life without being scarred in some way and without scarring others. Anybody heard of Leonard Cohen? I'm not a big fan of Leonard Cohen, but like he has this one set of lines. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Beautiful. I love it. And they're like, Ring the bells that still can ring. That harkens to like, yeah, like you've been hurt, you've been wounded. There's some pain there, but there's still beauty. And there's still much more of this story ahead. Right? So ring the bells. Feel the vibrations. Hear the sounds. And if in that moment those sounds are full of sobs, then that's what they are, right? That's what they are. It just so happened I stumbled upon like a TED talk recently by this uh, psychologist, Susan David. She said, 
Being positive has become a new form of moral correctness. In a survey I recently conducted with over 70,000 people, I found that a third of us, a third of us judge ourselves for having so-called bad emotions, like sadness, anger, or even grief, and actively try to push those feelings aside. We do this not only to ourselves, but also to the people we love, like our children. We may inadvertently shame them out of emotions seen as negative and jump to solutions and fail to help them to see these emotions as inherently valuable. The other day I have, I have kids, I'm not sure if you guys know, I have a, a boy and a girl. My son, he's uh, 10 and something was happening and uh, he started to cry and then he realized he was crying and he was like, mm. and I was like, hey, hey, no, just let it flow, man. These are feelings that you have inside that were triggered by this thing and we can't just suppress them and push them down. We have to see them, let them unfold and let them go, right? Normal, she says, normal natural emotions are now seen as good or bad. But when we push aside normal emotions to embrace false positivity, we lose our capacity to develop skills to deal with the world as it is not as we wish it to be. I've had hundreds of people tell me what they don't want to feel. They say things like, I don't want to try because I don't want to feel disappointed, or I just want this feeling to go away. And, I, and she says, and I understand, I say to them, but you have dead people's goals. Only dead people never get unwanted or inconvenienced by their feelings. Only dead people never get stressed, never get broken hearts, never experience the disappointment that comes with failure. Tough emotions are part of our contract with life. You don't, you don't get to have a meaningful life, a meaningful career, raise a family, or leave the world a better place without stress and discomfort. Discomfort is the price of admission to a meaningful life. Right? Remember back in, way back, 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 10 weeks ago, right? The four sufferings, right? Physical suffering, the suffering of unbearable things, the suffering of change, the great underlying suffering, right? You guys didn't, I don't know. Yeah. So part of the Four Noble Truths, right? So usually, they'll say like the first noble truth is, is suffering, but it's actually this word called dukkha. And dukkha has, means a lot of different things, right? Physical suffering, stress, unease, disappointment, lots of different things. And some, some traditions break it out into four different types. Physical suffering. This is the inescapable, inescapable suffering that we experience because we are mortal beings with an impermanent body. And this category is the suffering of sickness, old age, and death. This is the pain of stubbed toes, belly aches, and migraines. Right? We go through life believing that it should be all rainbows and unicorns, that this body should be doing what we want all of the time in a perfect, optimal fashion. And how dare it get a migraine? I don't have time for a migraine. The suffering of unbearable things. This is the suffering of having to put up with things we don't like. Everyday situations like traffic, our boss, noisy neighbors, and annoying people, and of not getting we want what we want, like that promotion, an ideal partner, or that new car. The suffering of change. Even, even when life is totally often awesome, when everything is going our way, we know deep down inside that this will not last forever. But even though we know this, that all external situations and conditions will change no matter how blissful and perfect they are, we try and control situations and people in order to keep things from changing. And we expect everything to stay the same. But life is changing, 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 changing. And then the great underlying suffering 
That is the great existential suffering. People have given words to it like, there's got to be something more to life than this. And it's true that, the, that no matter how many trips we take, how much good food we eat, or however, money, my, however many, much money we make, none of this will ever truly make us feel fulfilled and satisfied. What we truly desire and long for is within. And as long as we're not exploring, tapping into, and expressing our spiritual potential, we could become the ruler of the world. But even this wouldn't truly make us happy. I call this sort of like, welcome to being human, right? Oh, welcome to being human, right? You're going to have a body. It's going to fall apart, right? <laughs> You're going to have a boss. You're going to be stuck in traffic, right? Things are going to change all the time and you will question everything including your existence here but you push all of that away because it's uncomfortable right it is uncomfortable to talk about these things so we don't and we don't know how to we're not equipped it's not something that comes up in everyday conversation. Within the Vajrayana tradition, uh, Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche said this, to be a spiritual warrior, one must have a broken heart. Without a broken heart and the sense of tenderness and vulnerability that is in oneself and all others, your warriorship is untrustworthy. No. Yeah, we don't, right? Like the kintsukuri, right? Like we don't value the pain that we've been through. We don't value the struggle. Right? We want to push it away and that we believe that life is only good when it's easy, breezy, beautiful. Pina coladas, right? <laughs> On the beach, take the beach. <laughs> oh my gosh, you have to see the beauty. This is another poem. This is by Janine Sanderson. Wrapped in my weakness, I found my true strength. Wrapped in my perceived flaws, I found my greatest beauty. Wrapped in my fear, I found my unconquerable spirit. Wrapped in my foolish moments, I found great wisdom. Wrapped in my sorrow, I found the depth of my true joy. I have found some of my most valuable gifts wrapped in adversity. But we don't believe that that pain, that terrible moment, that loss is a gift softens us, that connects us, that opens us up, helps us explore what it means to be who we are. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all the terrible, beautiful catastrophes of my life. And now I'm in an ideal situation where I can share those. And that because of all these terrible things, I'm able to connect with so many different people and understand them, see them, feel them, be with them. Because they are me. I am them. Right? No. Here's another poem. For this one here. Let's go into a little bit of meditation. I'm going to get you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathe, my dear, breathe. Hold that tender and broken heart close. 
Stop pushing away your pain. It's actually a portal to your own potential. It may, it may not seem like it now, when your heart feels like it's been shattered into a million tiny pieces and tears fill your eyes to blurring. But breathe, my dear, breathe. Hold that tender and broken heart close. You will be better for being broken, more beautiful from this burden you have bared. These wounds and their winding paths, which seemingly have taken you far away from all that you love, have actually brought you home. So breathe, my dear, breathe. Hold that tender and broken heart close because it's the rarest of jewels and soon you'll reluctantly realize that its preciousness and power can only be discovered by opening up, letting go, and giving it away again and again. So breathe, my dear, breathe. Take a deep breath in through the nose and breathe out through the mouth. Come back to us here. So let's get, does everybody need any more cushions or anything like that? Because we're gonna go into the formal practice of the four statements. <laughs> 